Dr. Fayaz Kutzer. It's a Fayaz. Okay, okay. Yeah, so you need to uh, allow him access. Okay, I, by mistake, I made somebody else. Yeah. Dan? Yes. Mr. Fez? I Could you hear me now? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Good. Oh, wonderful. Dr. Ashgar Saab? Okay. Sir? Uh, you make your face, you are so smart, you make your face very clear so that I can see you. Sir, I'm here, sir. I, I made it I'm hazy, clear. hazy. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, there seems to be some good sunlight coming into my room. So. Oh, wonderful. Then vitamin yes. D is available <laughs> with you. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, I think uh, then, uh, sir, uh, maybe if you change the camera angle and let the sunlight come to your face directly, then your face would be much more clearer in that case. Is it better? Oh, from the other side too, it's the sunlight safe. <laughs> yes. Both sides, the sunlight is going. Uh -huh. Because uh, never mind, you are, we know you're smart. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so sir, uh, shall we begin with the session? Yes, yeah. please. please, please. <laughs> okay, so we'll just give a quick background to the day. Uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining in. For this early session we are having for the day to commemorate the World Wetlands Day. And the title we have taken for today, it's it's time for wetland restoration. As you know, it is the uh, uh, this thing theme of this year's wetland as well. So we had this wetlands day yesterday, but we are doing the commemoration today. And uh, a quick background wet, wetlands are bodies that are saturated or flooded with water either permanently or uh, seasonally or are vital and that are also vital for humanity. However, uh, due to the human activities are driving the degradation and pushing the wetland species to the verge of extinction, um, which in turn uh, result in losing the wetlands at a faster rate, even faster than the forest. Uh, in this light, uh, we in collaborative, we Spear India, in uh, under the Spear India Academy initiative, we are doing this uh, particular webinar in collaboration with the Wetland International South Asia. And we have been joined by an eminent set of panel for the day, uh, starting from uh, Sri K. Kalamegam, who is the environmental engineer uh, from the Department of Science, Technology and Environment uh, from the government of Puducherry. And uh, he is an environment management specialist working as an environmental engineer. And uh, he is also the additional project director at Puducherry Integrated Coastal Zone Management Society and a project coordinator at the Puducherry Climate Change Cell uh, in DST. Uh, we will welcome Mr. Kalamegam, sir. And we also have uh, Dr. Janki Shah, who is the program director for the Center for Environment Education, India, CE India. She has done a master's in environment science and PhD with a focus on climate change adaptation and sustainable livelihood. Uh, she has completed research work in decentralized composting, uh, have worked on various uh, thematic focuses, including climate change, water security, community engagement, youth mobilization, governance, and sustainable rural development and ESG. Uh, welcome, Dr. Janki. Uh, next up, Dr. Faiz is there with us, who is a senior scientist uh, from Yamuna Biodiversity Park, Center for Environment Management of Degraded Ecosystem. Uh, University of Delhi. He has been trained in environmental biology and wildlife biology. He has been working in the fields for the last 25 years. His field of interest in ecology, restoration, wildlife research, and aquatic biology. He has received Kalzi's Award for Excellence in Wildlife Conservation. He has also authored a book, Kuno Wildlife Sanctuary, Preparing Second Home for Asiatic Lion, and published some national and international research papers as well. Uh, welcome, Dr. Faiz. Thank now you. we have Thank Professor you. Ganesh with us, who is a founder. Pro Professor Ganesh Sharma is the founder and president of uh, World Environment Council. Uh, he has extensive leadership, lecturer, and professional experience of more than 25 years with various organizations, both private and public environment, and across multiple <laughs> industries. He was honored with various prestigious national and international awards and, and also an active member of many BOS for CIET, NCERT, Delhi, and Maharashtra State Board. He has been an assessor, auditor for CII, and 
PMKVY for the last 12 years and a teaching faculty in ICAI for the last 14 years. Uh, welcome, Professor Ganesh. And last but not the least, the, our collaborator and the moderator for the day, Dr. Asghar Nawab is there, who is a program head for Ecology and Wetland International South Asia. Uh, he is le the leading multidisciplinary pro projects on wetland assessment and ecosystem service so it's evaluation, uh, ecosystem-based GRR, and uh, community resilience and conservation of water, freshwater species and habitats in different landscape across India. He is a wildlife biologist by training and has an accomplished career that includes le leading major projects on freshwater species and habitats in different landscapes across India. His research interests include small mammal ecology, river and wetland restoration ecology, and aquatic monitoring and conservation. So that was a comprehensive introduction of all our panelists for the day, and uh, that sets up the stage, I believe, and to take it for the uh, take it forward and to lead us in the throughout the panel, I request Dr. Asghar Nawab, the moderator for the day, to take it over from here. Over to you, Asghar, sir. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Shiljo, for setting this uh, beautiful tone, and uh, the, as the moderator of this uh, session. It is my great uh, privilege to invite you all to this webinar to commemorate the World Wetlands Day. So uh, since uh, 1971, every year on February 2nd, we celebrate uh, World Wetlands Day to increase understanding uh, of and awareness on the ecological importance of the, uh, of the wetlands. And uh, the, the theme for 2023, uh, that is wetlands restoration uh, focuses on the urgent need and the significant role of restoring these ecosystems in order to make the society secure in terms of food, water, and livelihoods. As uh, Siljo rightly pointed out, the, uh, the day was uh, yesterday, but still the uh, celebrations uh, continue. And uh, uh, we, we are really uh, delighted to have the distinguished panelists with us. So uh, this webinar is being uh, conducted with the objectives of uh, understanding the role of the humanitarian agencies and other actors in wetlands restoration. And uh, secondly, sharing and learning of best practices in wetlands restoration and promoting the need for community mobilization. Uh, so essentially, uh, it will be a moderated discussion uh, of about 40 minutes. The panelists will uh, speak on a set of questions uh, emphasizing the significant role of restoring wetlands and uh, embedding wetlands conservation and nature-based solutions uh, for building resilience and suggest ways for upscaling and promotion of uh, ongoing initiatives. Uh, the discussions will be summarized as key takeaways and uh, in the end, if time permits, we will also take comments and questions from the attendees. So uh, to begin with, uh, I welcome our first panelist, uh, Dr. Fayaz Kutse. And uh, uh, Dr. Fayaz? Yes, please. Uh, so uh, so uh, essentially, uh, uh, we, we have uh, uh, posted two questions uh, for each uh, panelist. So, uh, so uh, which, which means that uh, uh, there's actually two rounds of uh, uh, question answers. So uh, we'll start with the first uh, questions as the first set of questions. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, Dr. Faya, since you have uh, this immense uh, experience on uh, working on uh, uh, largely urban and peri-urban uh, wetlands and uh, <clears throat> uh, especially uh, hands-on experience on restoring them. so. Uh, since uh, natural ecosystems as uh, wetlands uh, play a role in making new and, ex and existing infrastructure systems resilient to climate and disaster risks. So what is your take on this? Like, uh, we, we, we'd appreciate to hear your experiences uh, around this. So over to you, uh, Dr. Yeah. Fayaz. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Ashkar Nawab, uh, for uh, bringing me to this panel discussion. Actually, this is a very big question, actually. Finding answer is not easy. But however, when you look at the wetlands and surrounding forest, which are usually considered as, what do you call, 
very important blue green infrastructure itself mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what do you call over a uh, period of time the way they are disappearing that is very what do you call uh, bringing a lot of question on it so therefore since knowing the fact that these uh, blue green infrastructure which has huge bearing on other physical infrastructure what probably you mean when you ask about infrastructure and mm -hmm. uh, especially on the face of external expresses in terms of ecosystem we always talk you know ecosystem processing and external expresses so when you have external stress like flood tsunami cyclones what do you call droughts then these external stresses are actually they create huge problem for the physical infrastructure which we have seen over a period of time right from west bengal to what do you call odisha mumbai everywhere we have seen that how it is devastated the entire structure entire thing so first and foremost thing if you look at uh, about it uh, that uh, a, actually flood control is very important issue which is being handled by wetland and which i experienced personally in delhi because we have restored a huge wetland in active flood zone of wetland of about 100 what do you call uh, uh, 100 hectares area so therefore uh, Uh, when we see that flood is coming when uh, water is released from tajewala and uh, delhi government get very active i see that these wetlands become such a important uh, infrastructure natural infrastructure that they not only accommodate lot of water but it actually uh, what do you call reduce the velocity manifold and therefore the uh, what do you call neighboring embankment has little impact or no impact because the entire uh, flood plain is surrounded by human habitation so this is one of the very important aspect uh, when you look at the wetland and when it is restored has a, a capacity to store suffi sufficient or substantial amount of flood water then it becomes very very effective then you see it provides what you call buffering from offshore waves which we know that if you have no mangroves how we are suffering and if you think about latest development business model of development which is taking place across the country and we reach to the i call anman nicobar as gateway of india a very important place where we have already reached so we need to understand that most of the time when government comes they see themselves uh, you know in terms of roads and buildings and many infrastructure development but we need to see that how much money we earn out of this development and what is the ecological disaster we we see so if we convince government that if you put some sort of money on it that the road you are constructing the infrastructure you are developing how much money you have earned how much employment you have given and what kind of environmental disaster we are looking for so that is one point to see and coastal storm surges are being stopped by these wetlands these are very important and uh, when you look at the climate resilient system these wetlands are would be very important when you are suffering from drought and you have a functional wetland ecosystem and uh, that is the time when it supports most dr ashka Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Payas, uh, uh, for your response. I was enlightening uh, hearing you. So uh, we uh, now move on to our second panelist, and uh, may I now request uh, uh, Mr. K. Kala Megam to please uh, answer the uh, question. Sir, uh, can I start? Yes, sir. Good morning. We can. Yeah, see, very good morning, sir. And, uh, yeah. Welcome, sir. so uh, to begin uh, with sir uh, since uh, uh, you have this uh, uh, eminent uh, 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 career uh, in the uh, technology uh, sector uh, we would like to know from you the role of technology in addressing the water quality challenges in wetlands and perhaps uh, one of the most uh, kind of common and uh, uh, pressing issues uh, with regards to uh, wetlands conservation so uh, over to you sir uh thank you sir thank you uh, for the organization and the uh, 
moderators and other panel members uh, for having me here in this panel discussion. Uh, so at the outset, I would like to uh, just uh, inform one thing that uh, the World Wetland, uh, World Wetland Day is being celebrated in Pondicherry for uh, the next one and a half months. Uh, it's not a one day event here. Uh, we uh, uh, the, organizing the Department of Science, Technology and Environment along with the other NGO partners is organizing about one and a half months even until the next quarter day in uh, March 2022. Uh, so uh, in that, uh, uh, our focus is on one school, one pond program where we are tying up schools to the nearby water ponds so that the students get an opportunity to learn the uh, ecosystem in water pond in the, in the ponds. Uh, as we all know, like pond itself is a self-sustaining ecosystem and uh, knowing about the pond ecosystem I will uh, enable the students to understand the ways of nature functioning. Um, so uh, with that idea and to maintain the cleanliness of the ponds, we uh, entrust it as a responsibility of the nearby schools. Uh, and so this program has been successfully being carried out for the past three years. And uh, um, this year we will also be having, uh, uh, giving training to the students on uh, uh, using simple water testing kits to know the water quality in the uh, ponds, which is again related to the uh, question which you have put to me, uh, use of technologies uh, in wetland management. Uh, sir, uh, actually uh, the crisis which wetlands are facing is, as we all know, it's due to the rapid development and urbanization and the peri-urban areas uh, engulfing into the rural areas. Um, so uh, this has created a st stress in the demand for water, as well as it has caused the degradation of the water bodies. So the technology wise, like we need, uh, it's a multidisciplinary subject again, like we need to uh, apply technologies in the field of climatology, hydrology, uh, geology. So there are various aspects a little bit and a lot of technologies are available. The only thing is how we are going to utilize the technologies and manage the wetlands effectively. The first thing is we need to have a database, a comprehensive database of all the water bodies in a region within a district or uh, at the state level. We need to have a comprehensive inventory, which is to be prepared, identifying all the water bodies, their geographical area, water spread area. Um, you need to give them a unique uh, identification number. Uh, so, uh, and uh, all these data has to be put up into, uh, transformed into a geospatial information system, which will enable the decision makers to take suitable decisions at the right time. Um, we already have uh, the uh, WRI's information system uh, for the country, uh, but there are a lot of data gaps in the system and we need to address these data gaps through local level initiatives. At the district level, we need to feed the WRI system with proper data. We need to have an uh, GIS distance support system developed for each district. Uh, Pondicherry, uh, uh, in uh, 2019, we launched a web-based app called Jellableka. It's a people app, where, uh, which was developed uh, in uh, collaboration with Miri, where the people can give the details about the water bodies in their system. Um, so, uh, through those, uh, through through that app, like we were able to uh, get, collect a lot of information about uh, the, the uh, water bodies, uh, the flora, fauna, and other uh, details, also the status of uh, water quality levels, the pollution levels, the sources of pollution uh, going into the water body. So all these type of types of data need to be captured for managing the water bodies. Um, And uh, uh, the next thing is uh, uh, the uh, financial requirements, uh, the, the financial uh, supporting these activities through uh, proper uh, funding uh, through resource mobilization. Uh, the government is, uh, though water is one of the uh, life supporting system uh, and uh, the government focuses much on uh, drinking water supply uh, but as far as the wetlands are concerned, uh, the amount of uh, financial resources allocated for restoration of water bodies and maintaining their pristine nature is not that appreciable. Uh, 
like for uh, drinking water quality we depend more on agriculture i mean uh, ground water sorry we depend more on ground water we don't care we have shifted from surface water utilization to more of ground water utilization like in pondicherry uh, we had some uh, 87 irrigation and tanks and 1000 ponds uh, in 1950s when the french left pondicherry and uh, we at the time we had conjunctive use of uh, surface water as well as ground water for agriculture and drinking water supplies but in late 80s uh, thanks to the free electricity and other things provided by the government now all the farmers have shifted totally to ground water resources though we do a lot of projects on surface water rejuvenation and other things still uh, within the pondicherry region like uh, it, the total dependency is on ground water only and surface water is not uh, utilized objectively uh, so uh, we need to address this issue of conjunctive use of uh, surface water also to uh, uh, reduce reduce the demand on ground water uh, which is uh, more or less like uh, a future resource uh, which is to be stored uh, it's like a kind of deposit in the bank for the future so uh, that needs to be taken care of um, and um, of course for monitoring the pollution of the wetlands and uh, taking uh, steps to manage uh, the wetland uh, restore the wetland water what is a lot of uh, technologies are available but solution is the nature based solutions like phytoremediation uh, we have a lot of examples in the country also like in pune you can find a lot of uh, uh, places having this uh, green bridges in the channels i've seen that personally when i went to pune a uh, lot of societies they uh, they have uh, developed the green uh, green bridges which treats the water running through the uh, channels and uh, we have several other uh, such technologies also like the floating islands and other things which we can focus more on the uh, feeder channels which are entering into the water bodies rather than going for costly technologies uh, of course we need to have costly uh, the uh, conventional solutions also but for the uh, feeder channels which are entering the wetlands i think the nature based solutions will be more practical and applicable okay um, so with this uh, completely, like completely to... agree with you uh, yeah. so i'm sorry uh, uh, keeping note of the time uh, yep. i uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you here but uh, i'll come back again with the second uh, uh, question yes sir so uh, thank you uh, once again uh, for sharing uh, your uh, time uh, it's remar uh, remarkable uh, to learn that pondicherry uh, uh, is absolutely you know uh, it's it's celebrating uh, world wetlands day in the true sense it's a ce celebration in a real true sense a months uh, uh, long celebration that's amazing uh, I, i completely you know acknowledge and appreciate this yeah. so uh moving uh, to a third uh, panelist uh, may i now request dr janki shah to please address the first question uh, ma'am are we audible yes sir you are okay thank you uh, well, so much uh, good morning and well uh, welcome ma'am so uh, ma'am uh, as we understand uh, uh, the the major emphasis of your organization uh, towards uh, uh, environment e uh, education uh, we would actually like to understand the challenges or the capacity barriers that uh, need to be addressed to enable grassroots action for wetlands restoration and conservation so over to you ma'am thank you sir and very good morning to everyone it's a wonderful uh, you know opportunity and it's a wonderful uh, time listening to uh, the very senior and very uh, distinguished uh, scientists and experts who are here uh, talking about the wetland conservation indeed um, it's 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 actually actually a uh, very very critical uh, aspect that we look at when we talk of wetland conservation one of the key barrier that we think uh, or we have what we have faced is when we say wetlands like when you say river people really know that this is the river this is the flowing you know when you say ocean they really know this is the ocean but when you say wetlands the perception becomes little kind of you know dicey not everyone has the same perception sometimes mm -hmm. you think uh nalsarovar is a wetland it needs to be conserved 
So something which is really ecologically uh, very, very known, uh, that is only in communities perception, in, in, in layman's perception, that is what is generally considered as wetland. Wetland means a large lake or pond, that's a general perception. Right. And rest of the thing. So there is one sense of conservation priority attached to the wetlands we are, which are ecologically sensitive, which are widely known. But uh, understanding wetlands as, as a very critical ecosystem, you know, that itself is not widely known. And that, I feel, is a major challenge that how do we make people understand that wetland is not just a pond or not just a lake, but it's a very, very di different type of, you know, range of ecosystems, range of uh, uh, places, uh, which can be even permanent, which you, you know, monsoon, you may think that there's a spill, but in the summer, you can see that that's a dry, almost a dry piece of land, but that still has its own importance. Now, that is, I think, is a major challenge, especially when we talk of wetlands, which are, you know, uh, and especially in countries like India or any other country for that nature, where the large number of community and the area is spread beyond uh, the uh, within the community boundaries and they have multi-purpose uses so that is what is a major challenge and i think that is also a, a major barrier to how do we uh, motivate community towards the conservation of this wetland so i think first and foremost thing which is essential is how do we enhance the awareness about what constitute the wetland uh, also making people understand that this is the land where, you know, sometime it could be partially filled with the water, sometime it could be always filled with the water. And the second important challenge is to make them understand that the piece of land that you see, which is currently uh, not holding water, but it is not a waste land. This is the very piece of land which would store the water. It would like, uh, I was just listening to the, my previous panelists and that they mentioned, as they mentioned, now wetlands play a very, very crucial role in the, all the nature-based solutions. Now, communities do not name, I mean, the nature-based solution is not something, it's a new term as a term. But people always know within village, within community that if the pond is, if the rural pond is not properly, you know, is encroached, that means that there would there could be floods the nearby uh, fields can get flooded some of the birds which were coming may not be coming uh, sometimes during the uh, you know post monsoon seasons when they need water for irrigation it is not available so they don't know that there is a perception there is an understanding which is not very structured or which is not uh, very clearly defined or linked with the role of wetland so i think that is a very second thing that there is an understanding there is understanding which is based on experience. Now, if we can connect it with the scientific approaches and with the scientific importance and the learnings that are emerging related to what wetlands is and how to how its conservation can help and serve these various purposes, which are critical to the community life and livelihoods, whether it is the water, whether it is agriculture, even the role as, um, especially in the smaller villages and smaller towns, its role in um, you know, it can potentially serve, and now what is being experimented is how do they serve in decentralized wastewater treatments where the water can be treated and stored and that can be reused. So those are the kind of, you know, things where the community awareness, if could be raised, it could play a very, very critical role. Uh, sorry, sir, uh, how do we, do I have some more time to elaborate or do you want me to, I, I mean. Uh, my, I mean, my sincere apologies, my sincere apologies, but please. thank you so much for your beautiful response. And I completely uh, agree uh, with your thoughts. So I'll, I'll come up uh, uh, with the uh, second uh, uh, question as well, uh, ma'am. Sure, you. sir. Thanks Looking once again. To listen to other. Thank yes. you. Sure, ma'am. Sure. So uh, moving to our fourth panelist, uh, may I now uh, invite Professor Ganesh Chana to please uh, answer the first uh, question. Uh, Professor Ganesh? Yes, sir, yes. Are we audible? Okay, great. Uh, great. Yes, I okay. will share my PPT. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, sir, understanding your, uh, your, yes. uh, your pivotal uh, uh, role in the, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in the uh, world uh, policy uh, and uh, setting different agendas, uh, we'd, we'd like to understand like how far have the various government initiatives uh, like the National Plan for Conservation of Aquatic Ecosystems and National Wetland Conservation Programs, uh, others as well, 
have uh, succeeded in their agenda so far. So what have been your experiences? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, uh, and uh, Square India also. So here, You're welcome, actually, sir. Uh, you. yeah. So we know uh, about the wetlands. Okay. So basically, uh, government uh, they are going to provide the like uh, thousand crores have been released for the conservation of 157 wetlands in the country under the national plan for the conservation of aquatic ecosystem NPCA. So in this, uh, what is the role of the uh, this NPCA? The NPCA is a conservation program for both wetlands and the lakes. It is a centrally sponsored scheme uh, currently being implemented by Minister of uh, Environment, Forest, Climate Change, and was formulated by merging the uh, National Conservation Plan and the National Wetlands Conservation Program. So under the NPCA scheme, uh, the government, like a central assistance is based on the proposals uh, received from the state government as well uh, as a conformity with the guidelines and the budget availability. Uh, government always uh, like uh, they are going to provide the and implement it to various scheme with the help of the uh, like uh, ruler as well as in a uh, environment uh, environmental uh, related. The scheme is cover various activities such as a uh, inter uh, interception, uh, then diversion and the treatment for wastewater, yeah, shoreline protection, uh, lakefront development in uh, say to cleaning and so on. So these are the various schemes under uh, the government. Uh, what, is, uh, what are the main aim and objectives? Uh, it's aimed to uh, holistic conservation and restoration of lakes and uh, uh, like water, achieving the de desired water quality enhancement beside the importance of bi bi biodiversity and uh, ecosystem uh, through an integrated and the multiple approaches with the common regulatory framework. Uh, these are the various schemes would be contributed to the re uh, reduction of the uh, like uh, pollution loads and uh, improvement in a biodiversity as also as a goods and a service provided by these water bodies with the uh, different uh, stake, stakeholders. So in India, like the uh, wetlands in India, there are, uh, India has a nearly 4.6% of wetlands, uh, uh, land as a wetlands covering an areas of 15.26 million hectares and has 42 sites des uh, uh, designated uh, wetlands of international importance. That is uh, 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 the information from the Ramsar sites. Wetlands are the regulated under the Wetlands Conservation and Management Rules uh, 2017. Uh, in 2010, version of the uh, uh, rules provided for the Central Wetland Regulatory Authority, but the 2017 rules play, replaced with the state level uh, bodies and uh, created National Wetland Committee. Uh, which functions as an advisory role. They are going to provide a like different scheme. Uh, these are the uh, national efforts by the government, uh, like uh, National Lake Conservation Plan, NLCP, and the National Wetlands Conservation Program, NWCP, and the Wetla uh, Wetlands Conservation and Management Rule 2010. Then draft, they are going to revise the uh, uh, wetland drafts into rules 2016 also. So with the help of the, these are the efforts uh, like uh, government provided. So uh, basically, uh, so this type of functions uh, with the help, uh, like wetlands, uh, majorly functions like uh, flood conve uh, convenience, uh, then protection from the storm, waves and uh, erosions, flood storage, yeah, sediment controls, uh, habitat for the fish and the uh, shellfish, habitat for the water flow and water wildlife, habitat for the rare and then uh, uh, space, yeah, re uh, recreation. So these are the like uh, functions like uh, source of the water supply, uh, food production, yeah, timber production, uh, then preservation of uh, historic, uh, okay, archaeological values, education and the research. So say, source of open space and contribution of uh, aesthetic values, then water quality and improvement. Uh, so how we can restore the uh, restoration of the wetland? So these are the mainly seven points are there. Consider the multitude, uh, multitude of the service, uh, the natural wetland provided and aim uh, to re recapture the wide range of the uh, those benefits. Okay, uh, then aim to recreate uh, wetlands ecosystem that can maintain uh, itself, integrated local communities and uh, include uh, industries uh, during the planning and implementation, identify the cases of the degradation of limit of the eliminated them, then clean up the Degrade, uh, degraded areas, uh, restore the native uh, vegetation, uh, 
vegetation and wildlife and remove the unsafe spaces restrict the site access and creating the specific places for the people uh, and animals so these are uh, we are going to with the help of these are seven points we are going to uh, restore our wetlands and then these are the uh, again key benefits for, for a restored wetland so like uh, with the help of these points so increase with the bio, uh, biodiversity Re, uh, replenish uh, of filtered uh, water supply, enhance the protection ag against the floods and the storm, more local and the sustainable livelihood and uh, less poverty, increase the uh, tourism, higher quality uh, laser time, uh, increase the uh, carbon storage and uh, avoided emissions, inner uh, satisfaction of achieving uh, our transactions. So uh, basically with the help of these are the points, so we are, uh, our organization World Environment Council, we have started the one uh, unique uh, uh, concept that is a environment protection bank we have started with the school level uh, this is a unique uh, worldwide unique concept so with the help of the students we are going to implement this projects uh, with every school uh, we are already started in uh, uh, maharashtra in uh, solapur and uh, pune and uh, nepal also and uh, delhi also here so we are going to create awareness uh, for the regarding the environment and uh, all the uh, related to environment we are going to create awareness uh, with the help of the students also and uh, thank you so much for giving uh, me uh, giving this opportunity for me uh, you're most welcome sir you're most welcome and uh, thank you, thank you uh, so much uh, uh, for enlightening us uh, on this and uh, in fact it's it's uh, completely marvelous to uh, learn that uh, uh, your uh, organization has come up with a, yeah. a unique uh, a program on environment protection uh, bank uh, yes. and any congratulations on this and we wish you uh, best luck uh, uh, on this uh, program so um, you. you're most welcome so uh, uh, before uh, uh, moving on to the second round of uh, questions uh, just wanted to uh, like request the panelists to be uh, kind of slightly brief uh, in their answers uh, since the positivity of uh, time. And uh, uh, other than that, I would also like to share two great news uh, with regards to wetlands conservation. Uh, perhaps you people might be uh, uh, knowing them, but uh, the, since we have this uh, wetlands fraternity uh, with us, uh, joining with us, so it'd be wonderful. So the first thing is that uh, there was this mention of wetlands conservation in the recently uh, announced uh, uh, budget, the financial budget. So that's a big uh, leap uh, uh, for wetlands conservation. And the second thing is that uh, in the last uh, uh, monkey bath uh, program, there was a a good deal of uh, mention of wetlands conservation and efforts uh, being made in India by our Honorable uh, Prime Minister. Uh, uh, I hope that you people do know about this uh, program, uh, this uh, radio uh, broadcasting uh, program that happens every uh, Sunday where the Honorable Prime Minister comes up uh, with uh, uh, different uh, uh, topics to discuss. And uh, uh, this uh, last uh, episode, uh, the uh, the wetlands conservation uh, was taken up on a great deal. So I think uh, these were really two great uh, uh, news and informations that uh, perhaps the wetlands fraternity would like to share upon. So uh, moving on to our uh, second round of uh, questions, uh, may I please invite Dr. Fayaz once again. Uh, sir, uh, May I continue with the question? Yes, please. Okay, uh, so how do you think that synergies can be developed amongst different organizations to enable wetlands conservation and restoration at the regional and national levels? So perhaps how we actually you know, uh, stop the silos. In fact, you have put both the questions to me in a way that I don't know, actually very, uh, Tough time <laughs> for me to reply. Actually, when you look at this, because everything people know, the theoretical aspect, what you work, when you are in the field, restoring at the site, there are multiple agencies working with you. They have different perception of wetland. 
and therefore i'll start by with a story when which i share with college student when i teach that uh, when i talk to one engineer that how do you see uh, a river engineer said that it's a pipeline which takes water from one place to other place. What I'm trying to convince the audience, uh, Dr. Ashkar Nawab, that wetland and rivers are kind of perception. Unfortunately, even after so many years, so many experts working on it, it is still a perception. So when I ask engineer, he said pipeline. When I ask one real estate fellow, the sir, how do you see a river? He said, Fayaz, it's a wonderful place. We get sand and boulders. Then I asked one economist, sir, how do you see a river? He said, it's a marketable commodity, bottle it and sell in the market. So actually, when you look at the answer, it's a very difficult answer. Then I asked my teacher from Delhi University that, sir, how do you see a river? He kept mum for some time and then said, Fayaz, it's a living system. So, so far I have seen across the country that the system is working on perception. And when perception prevails, science fails, in my opinion. So uh, when you look at the multiple agency comes together, in Delhi, we are working with, uh, we are from Delhi University, we are working with Delhi Development Authority, who is known for you know, their effort to build up a city. And while build up a city, uh, the, uh, uh, within development matrix environment pushed out, but still we convinced them and now, we working with them. We have network of seven biodiversity park in Delhi, a model which has been given by legendary ecologist Professor C. R. Babu from Delhi University, where we uh, came out with a solution in a different model. That when you look at Delhi, Delhi, heavily populated, there are multiple places where you have natural wetland but filled up, a lot of sewage inside. So in isolation, you cannot you know, think about wetland because in a city like Delhi, which is full of sewerage, you have to consider sewerage part of this management system. So therefore, initially we worked in Yamuna Biosity Park, which was the first biosity park of the country where we restored wetland in a different way. We identifying wetland is a, itself is a huge task. I don't see a set of rules that how you identify wetland and when we, we started working in 2002, it was a huge task to see that how you identify. And then from our personal practice, we came out with principles. And when we see that there are indicated species like Phragmites, Typha, et cetera, we suggest you that subsoil aquifer is very high. Or in other words, you, it also convinced that it was a wetland once upon a time that was filled up. So therefore those identifying biological entity must be understood well before identifying the what you call wetland. Recently, I was involved in preparing action plan for Varuna and Asi River. Both comes together and makes Varanasi, you all know. So there I visited the site. I have seen when I was trying to find out origin of Asi, it was whole houses all around. But there were typhus and phragmites talking very loudly that no, I am here. So then I brought authority. The sir, this is the origin point, how you will work a river which has become a Siva in, in its entire stretch. Similarly, Varuna, I have seen that how a river can be survived through wetland restoration. And we have prepared the action plan, submitted to Honorable NGT. NGT agreed, now UP government has to work on it. In Delhi, while working on uh, Biodiversity Park, we started restoring wetland in inactive flood plain through the indicators which I suggested and in active flood zone. Both have different set of parameter to restore. And there you need to bring many, what you call a stakeholder, and especially uh, institution like Delhi Development Authority, which has given land and money to work on it. Uh, and uh, we have successfully restored many wetlands. And those restored wetlands are not only holding substantial amount of flood water, but that become best place for birding in Delhi. And actually, uh, we also came out with a solution uh, four or five years ago in Nila House, which, which, which is known as one of the beautiful wetland, historically giving water to the entire southern part of Delhi that was filled up. So uh, uh, citizens went to Honorable Court and court directed to DDA and DDA came to us and we have restored that wetland now with one MLD of sewerage. Now that wetland has again become Nila House and it started bringing a lot of migratory birds in. Similarly, in 
what you call Kalindi Kunj near Maharani Bagh. Recently, we have started, there are about 11 drains which are with a different capacity of sewerage. They are going directly to the river Yamuna. And now what we are doing, we are trying to, what do you call, clean the, that sewerage before it reaches to Yamuna with the help of constructed wetland system. And they are effectively being utilized, low cost effectively being utilized. And therefore, understanding of wetland uh, what you call identif identification of wetland, understand, understand, uh, understanding of ecological uh, restoration techniques, because ecological restoration is not plantation Dr. at Fayaz, all. Dr. Fayaz, so therefore, Fayaz, therefore, these understanding comes together and makes a system functional. Dr. Ashkarnava. Fantastic, fantastic. Thanks so much, and uh, I completely uh, agree with your thoughts on uh, taking concrete uh, steps to mobilize behavioral change of different stakeholders something really uh, needed in the recent times. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, Dr. Vyas. So uh, moving to our uh, uh, second uh, uh, panelist, I now request uh, uh, Mr. K. Kala Megham to please uh, answer the second uh, question. Uh, sir, uh, a, a very specific question, like uh, what role can Earth Observation Sciences uh, play in supporting wetlands conservation. Your uh, thoughts on this, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the earth observation satellite imageries can uh, play a vital role, significant role in uh, um, the uh, conservation and management of wetlands in the country. Um, it's it's a most uh, more reliable and cost economic uh, way uh, to give first-hand information on the uh, wetlands prevailing in the country. Um, this will uh, help in giving uh, the information to the planners and decision makers about the importance, the density of the uh, water covered areas in their uh, region. Um, and uh, it will uh, gain, uh, uh, it will help in gaining more attention on conservation of uh, the wetlands within the region. Uh, but uh, 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 as we all know, like uh, we had this uh, 2011 uh, wetland mapping uh, done, uh, wetland atlas prepared for India by the uh, Survey of India, which is an excellent uh, resource for the country on the wetlands, uh, which was uh, uh, developed with the help of the uh, satellite imageries uh, like ISO Satellite 3. Uh, so uh, the satellite resources are being used for various studies on wetlands in the country. But this need to be supplemented by uh, uh, GIS-based information also. Uh, we need to uh, overlap the uh, FMB sketches of the uh, water bodies, which is available with the revenue departments, and also collect other data on the surrounding socioeconomic aspects uh, of the uh, 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 wetland uh, areas. Uh, so we need to have a comprehensive information system which we can uh, develop with the help of this uh, earth observation images. Um, uh, next thing is um, uh, the uh, it, it not only helps in uh, the uh, delimita delimitation of the wetland areas, but also we get other informations uh, like the uh, quality of the water uh, water bodies and uh, the quantity of the uh, water availability, changes in the water availability. Uh, so the trends in uh, water levels um, the land use changes around the wetlands. So several kind of informations can be uh, uh, obtained from this uh, 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 satellite imageries. So uh, uh, that is one important aspect which we should focus on uh, in uh, the, taking up more researchers in the field of application of uh, satellite imageries on wetland management. Thank you, sir. I think we agree with you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I now move on uh, to the third panelist. Uh, Dr. Janki Shah. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, we would appreciate uh, learning from you uh, some specific uh, integrated approaches for conservation management and wise use of the wetlands. Your take, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, I think the discussion that has been initiated uh, on the conservation, especially uh, as uh, Dr. Kutsar and uh, Dr. Kala just mentioned, uh, I think first critical uh, aspect is how do we identify, and um, you know uh, I would I would connect it with our own experience 
in terms of uh, we have been working on a ground project where we are engaging women in water conservation especially water conservation at the rural area uh, and connecting it with the climate change so i am i'm kind of connecting that experience in terms of the you know summarizing that in terms of some key steps that could be taken and maybe like looked at uh, how do we approach the um, wetland conservation especially when the when the wetlands are uh, ownership is not very clear so sometimes it is the uh, panchayat ownership or the community ownership so or whether when it's in a, it's an urban area it could be in the urban local bodies or sometimes the, even the large lands within the urban areas are held by institutions so the ownership is uh, can be different then when the ownership is not very clear that time uh, a very uh, clear approach in terms of identifying convincing and engaging uh, the stakeholder becomes very important so uh, for the identification what we generally do is we also engage uh, you know, one is the existing databases but at the same time geohydrologists are engaged so that they help community to actually locate and identify and as well as doing a stakeholders mapping stakeholders mapping in terms of what is the uh, what are the users uh, what are its uses and what are the different users and how and in which time of the period or in the year they are using it uh, i'll give you an example of that for example a, a, a pond towards the outskirts of the village may uh, may be used not only by the uh, by the nearby farmers for uh, for water but it might also be used by the uh, uh, by the uh, pastoralist communities who are moving from one village to another or especially during the uh, you know winter months or just just towards the end of the winter months when they are migrating or returning back to the village at that time that pond serves a purpose for the pastoralist community now so uh, apart, along with that uh, livelihood related things there are different types of birds which might be using it for roosting or those purposes now these kind of you know local specific information we try and find it or engage the local community and this is done through various one is there are ongoing projects which are related to my, uh, my, my apologies for interrupting you uh, we, we barely have uh, two minutes left with us so i just wanted uh, okay. thanks for okay. sharing I, your i just thoughts. i just add one line to say thanks, that thanks, thanks. Uh, engaging multiple users taking their opinions and ensuring that all are on the same as much as possible on the same page towards conservation along with the scientific rationale that is i we feel is a key to uh, successful conservation absolutely absolutely ma'am so uh, moving to our fourth panelist uh, professor ganesh uh, your second question is like what are the priority areas to be focused on and uh, revisited in the design and implementation part of policy and regulatory frameworks and monitoring for effective and efficient wetland restoration uh, so i'd request you to be very very brief uh, please sir your quick thoughts so you're not audible i was already uh, mentioned in the ppt okay uh, how we are going to restore and uh, with the help of the government uh, organizations and uh, some ng research okay and uh, one more thing uh, we are going to like promote the agro tourism that is a uh, very uh, important nowadays uh, in our uh, solapur maharashtra there is a uh, i think 5 to 10 uh, eco tourism places so uh, people are visited and uh, they are going to uh, like uh, uh, just walk with the nature and they are going to enjoy every moment with the environment so they know they are going to satisfy with the they are connected close connected with the nature so these are the times we are going to implement it in a various location also like in bali ya in agro tourism because uh, uh, they are easily connected with the environment uh, and the government also they are going to provide the very uh, various schemes for them to like a restoration of the wetlands already i was mentioned in the ppt okay uh yes thank you sir okay uh thank you uh, very, uh, very much uh, professor ganesh and uh, uh, with this uh, we have come to an end uh, uh 
of the question and answer uh, session. And I see that there are four uh, uh, questions already uh, onto the uh, chat uh, uh, platform. So uh, perhaps uh, since there's paucity of time, uh, I would uh, request the attendees to please uh, uh, put your queries to the respective uh, 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 panelists and perhaps uh, or even to Shiljo, who might be able to uh, uh, respond back. And uh, uh, once again, uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining with us. So uh, Shiljo, do we, uh, can you spare me a minute's time or so, so that I can summarize? Okay. Uh, you would like to do that? Yes, sir. I, I think we can take one question and then uh, perhaps we can summarize. And for the other questions, we can probably share the share it with the speakers and they can then give okay. the responses. Okay. So, so the floor is uh, uh, over to you. Ha, we'll take one question from the chat. Anyone? Uh, so, so maybe this one uh, would be a to even for me to learn this thing. So, uh, Mr. Santosh Kumar has said that MISTI is the new scheme launched by government for coastal habitat improvement and mangrove plantation. How NGOs can reap benefits of the scheme for wetland and coastal con conservation? So open to the forum, like any panelists who would like to address this. Anyone if you would like to shed some light on this about the MISTI scheme, how can yeah. NGOs benefit uh, from they're this? They're going to visit the website. Okay, all uh, details are available on the website. So we are going to easily register with the uh, MISTI website and uh, we are going to field uh, all information regarding uh, like your NGOs and everything. Then automatically we'll get, uh, get the benefit from the, uh, the scheme also. So I think you are going to visit the website. You're not audible, I think. Uh, Shiljo, uh, you're not audible. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Ganesh Ji, for that insights. Mm -hmm. Anyone else would like to pour some more insights on this about the mystery scheme? So uh, mystery scheme is the uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest Climate okay. Change. Uh, uh, initiation uh, to uh, promote mangroves in the country. Uh, the scheme is under development. Um, the uh, State Department of Forest will be implementing the scheme. And uh, during the scheme uh, uh, develop project developments at state level, the scheme definitely all the NGOs consultation, consultation of all the concerned stakeholders will be carried out by the respective state governments while uh, formulating the projects. And any successful project uh, uh, requires the uh, involvement of all the stakeholders, including the community-based organization and the other NGOs, involvement in uh, uh, successful implementation of the project. Uh, so that will be taken care of by the respective state governments during the project implementation stage. Apart from MISTI, there's also this National Coastal Mission, which is also being uh, launched by the Ministry of Environment and Forest, and uh, the scheme for that is also being developed by the Ministry of Environment and Forest. So the National Coastal uh, Mission also focuses on nature-based solutions for uh, addressing the coastal issues. So that also has components for uh, the mangrove conservation and conservation of coral reefs and other, uh, other natural ecosystems uh, along the coast. Not able to hear you, Chenjo. Okay, thank yeah. you, sir. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kalamigam, for uh, sh shedding some light on the mystery scheme, and it was really en enlightening to know that scheme a bit more. And I think that answered the question, and the rest we can perhaps uh, answer, like <coughs> we'll share the answers over mail. And uh, in the interest of time, maybe Asghar, sir, you can summarize the entire discussion. Okay, thanks so much. So uh, once again, uh, I thank our esteemed panelists uh, for sharing their uh, 
encouraging thoughts and enlightening uh, us on the subject of uh, wetlands restoration. And uh, I summarize the two uh, question answer sessions. So under uh, the uh, the session one, uh, the question one uh, uh, session. So we largely uh, have the key takeaways as uh, uh, Dr. Fayaz uh, 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 emphasized the the role that uh, uh, wetlands can actually play a major role in uh, as nature based uh, solution, and perhaps uh, mangroves are one of the uh, classic examples. Uh, uh, Mr. Kalamagam uh, also emphasized uh, on the uh, the role of phytoremediation as a nature-based solutions for peri-urban uh, wetlands, and as well, uh, he uh, pointed out the conjunctive use of uh, uh, surface water and groundwater uh, to be uh, uh, to be encouraged as one of the important aspects for water uh, looking into the water pollution needs. Uh, doc, Dr. Janaki uh, emphasized on the uh, uh, on the uh, on enhancing uh, wetlands knowledge and building the connect uh, with uh, scientific uh, approaches, and perhaps uh, stressing that uh, the perceptions are confusing and even uh, their ownership issues. Uh, Professor Ganesha. Uh, uh, highlighted the uh, the pertinent role of the NPCA, and uh, in fact, uh, this is one uh, agenda of the government, uh, wherein uh, the wetlands management plans now need to be uh, revised and uh, you know need to be revised and revisited uh, as uh, required under the framework of the NPCA, and also uh, informed us about the new initiative. Uh, of the Environment Protection Bank. So uh, moving to the uh, second uh, round of uh, uh, questions, uh, Dr. Fayaz uh, highlighted the need for concrete steps to mobilize behavioral change of different stakeholders. Uh, Mr. Kalamegam uh, informed us that the use of satellite imageries uh, plays a significant uh, role and is a very cost-effective way. However, this needs to be supplemented by the GIS domain and ground truthing. Uh, Dr. Jan, Dr. Janke uh, informed about the, the different and uh, multiple uses of the wetlands and the users as well. So a need uh, for a common platform for different multi-stakeholders. And uh, lastly, uh, Professor uh, Prasanna uh, emphasized the role government uh, plays, the key role government plays, and uh, informed of the agro uh, tourism as one of the key initiatives uh, towards wetlands restoration and conservation. So uh, with this, I uh, end the summarization and I hope the attendees have uh, enjoyed the interactions and I've, uh, uh, I've learned a lot uh, uh, from this uh, webinar. So thank you once again uh, our, uh, to our esteemed uh, panelists and the attendees. And over to you, uh, uh, Shilja. Thank you so much, Asghar, sir. Uh, so quickly, without wasting much time, I'd like to thank all the panelists who joined us throughout. And uh, it was such an insightful discussion which we had today and uh, it has in the set a stage for uh, planning our future like especially the year ahead uh, on how to what are the priority areas which we where we need to focus and the panelists which we had today are all from diverse sectors and the expertise was really important for this and thank you for sharing your expertise and your field learnings and uh, thank you, Asghar, sir, for your uh, this effective moderation. And uh, thank you. It was really lovely working with you. Thank, thank you, you all so the panelists much. for joining thank in. You. And we'll be coming up with the report. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. All panelists also. Have a good day. Especially Dr. Ashgar Nawab. Much you, appreciated, sir. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank sir. You, thank you. Bye, guys.